Welcome to day five of Victoria, Melbourne lockdown four, but who knows because apparently there were 11 new cases found yesterday. So this seven day thing might become infinity, who knows? So today's topic is using liquid lipsticks, how they're not supposed to be used in other parts of the face other than the lips. Do's and don'ts and tips as well. So today um, I would like to start by talking about why does a liquid lipstick work as an eye base? Typically, these kind of liquid lipsticks like these ones, um, the Lime Crime, um, the MAC ones as well, they, are, they typically contain kaolin, and kaolin is a mattifying agent. It's a mineral clay that's designed to keep that area of the face very matte. It consistently draws moisture into itself. So that's why it makes an amazing eye base. So what are some of the liquid lipsticks that you can and can't use? So, um, good question. I find from my personal experience, because I have gone through a lot of them and I will pretty much give anything a go. Sometimes to my detriment, I'll end up with watery eyes and whatnot. But um, let's talk about the, the success stories first, hey? So I have great success using any of these kind of formulas, even these little cheapy ones. Um, Lime Crime is fantastic. Um, I think when we're talking about color, some people can have a sensitivity towards a very, very heavy blue or a very heavy red base as well. This is not everyone, but that's something to note. So if you do feel like your eyes are getting a little itchy when you're initially starting to apply, maybe back out of that. You know, put a little bit of rosehip oil or something on and buff that back and wash it off. So um, for example, reactions that I've had in the past are to very heavy blue. This is uh, Kat Von D Echo. And then this one is Kylie and it's 22. These kind of colors, these particular ones I've had bad reactions to. Um, I think, again, it comes down to the actual pigment being used in a place that it shouldn't be used. You'll notice that some eyeshadows, for example, that are these kind of shades, probably very quietly in the description of their product on the box would say not to be intended to be used on the eye. I know when I used to work at MAC, quite a few products came in like that. And another important thing to note is make sure, regardless of its texture, whether it's matte or if it's shiny, that it does not contain a plumping agent like these plush glasses. These plush glasses contain a capsicum extract and a cinnamon extract that is designed to irritate and burn. You put that on your lids, not gonna have a good time. So brush choice, brush choice is important as well. I like to go for a brush that has a little bit more of a grunt to it, so I really enjoy, this is the M173 by Morphe, and it's got quite a nice dense fat head on it. Um, even little typical blenders like this, uh, provided that the blender is thick, it can't be flimsy. Another one that I've used with great success is just a flat shader, but you've got to alter your technique. Instead of buffing and blending, we're gonna be blending it southbound. In fact, I might even show you now. Just do it! Just do it. You don't need to explain what you're going to do. Just do it. So for today's demonstration, I'm using Fashion Legacy by MAC. It's a, a retro matte liquid lip color. What we're going to do is I want to start on the inner corner of the eye first and the cross. And then I'm going to sort of create a bit of a perimeter to know where I want my initial eyeshadow to stop. And that's typically, you can see just above the crease there. Blending that across. What I would do is I'm gonna to try to dry out this brush a little bit, RIP hand. And now what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the tip of the brush, almost like a paddle. And I'm gonna feather that back and forward. I'm gonna swap out now to a little blender, a nice dense blender. And I'm just gonna use that to further diffuse the edges. Little tiny dollop under the eye too. One other thing I found with reds is yes, they do stain. However, I did a red eye look yesterday and it's fine, it's come right off. Staining is not permanent, it will come off. If you're really concerned about the next day, just use a bit of bloody concealer. It's really not that big of a deal. So it does not need to be as insane as this. I'm gonna show you on this eye how you can go a little bit more low key, but still using a liquid lips. I'm gonna be using Maybelline's Vivid Matte Liquid in Nude Thrill. I'm gonna be using a smaller yet fluffy shader. I'm gonna pick it up on the tip of the applicator and I'm gonna start by applying this across the lash line. And then blending downwards, but moving physically towards my forehead, I'm blending that out through into the socket. Little tiny bit along the lower lash line. Can you see how that creates just a little soft gingery halo around the edge of my eye? Just a little subtle look. Now I don't need to set either of these eyes, believe it or not, 
But I thought I would demonstrate by using a different colored base under each one, but using the same shade. So this is Ambering Rose Blush by MAC. I'm gonna sketch a little tiny bit with a large fluffy blender. And this is a 240S brush by MAC. And we're gonna pick a little bit up. And just by fluffing a little bit over each one, I want to show you how the top color can be manipulated by the shade that sits underneath. So we're gonna start with the subtle one. bit more intense than I wanted, but whatever. And then you're gonna use the same shade on the red. See the effect? And that is the same blush, just using a different priming base. So that might have sounded obvious, but I just thought I'd demonstrate the, the diversity of looks you can create just by changing up, not what you put on top, but what you slip underneath. Thanks for tuning in to another David K. Davey video. I will see y'all tomorrow, bright and early, for day six of Melbourne's Lockdown 4. Hopefully I've still got my marbles by then. Opera, please subscribe. Thanks.